what's up you guys this is Rafi McGay Guy Plays and today on the hit list it's all about our main squeeze when we target my top 5 favorite primary weapons of 2016. Now as primary weapons go this year was definitely a bit thin on new entries into the roster however towards the end of the year we definitely saw a boom in experimental mechanics which definitely shook things up a bit but the real question here is are all of these new mechanics interesting or effective enough to edge out tried and true favorites or does the old adage of if it ain't broke don't fix it still ring true. Now I do have have a quick disclaimer, I am leaving off Riven mods from these weapons since they are unique to each player and can wildly swing the performance of a weapon. I personally love them and I think that they are a ton of fun, but it's kind of pointless to review a weapon's efficacy based on potentially getting similar statistics. Now with that out of the way, let's start scratching off targets. At number 5, the Javelock comes in as one of the most debatable of the bunch. While some people find its mechanics kind of clunky, I think it's a great representation of risk versus reward, as skilled players with good placement can easily clear out areas with its alternate fire, making its retrieval a cinch. Its primary fire mode is also nothing to scoff at. When modded up, it's got a 50% chance to crit with a 4.4 times damage multiplier, and its high base status gives you the option to either go all in on damage or sacrifice a bit of it for a little more control via its status effect. Its flexibility, awesome new animation sets, and unique mechanics definitely reserve it a spot on my list. Plus, it encourages players to improve their skills leading targets with projectiles. So, anything that helps players improve their skills is always a big thumbs up. Next up, the Rock to Serenos comes in at number 4. Whilst this did drop from last year's number 1 slot, admittedly this thing is still my pick of the litter when it comes to bows, as when I try to use anything else in its place, the rest feels slow and clunky. Because while being a space ninja feels cool and all, being Legolas, the space ninja, feels even fucking better. Its base .25 charge rate makes it faster than any of the other bows, even after they've been equipped with speed trigger or Val acceleration on their own, which clears out a fire rate mod slot for more damage, one of the alkalite mods, or even a Riven. Combine that with its ability to spread viral as well as periodically replenishing your energy, and in my eyes there is no question as to which Cernos variation makes my list. Number 3 brings us another tried and true favorite, the Tsongkorn. I know there are so many people that absolutely hate hearing about this weapon, but with frames like Titania and Nidus, it just has so much freaking synergy. No ribbon mod required. The fact that it doesn't penalize you heavily for bad placement is also a massive plus, because as we've seen with weapons like the Javlock and the first incarnation of the Tsar, it can be extremely frustrating when a stray teammate or enemy gets in your line of sight and triggers lethal self damage. In addition, while I personally haven't used it too much this year, I found that it's nice to know that it exists just in case I'm planning on doing something even bit more challenging. Moving along, the Tigris Prime makes its premiere at number 2. Now as many of you know, I was never a fan of the Tigris series whatsoever. However, y'all know that I jizz all over interesting mechanics and the interplay between the Tigris's high base damage, its uncommonly high percentage of slash and its IPS spread, combined with the way shotguns apply status once they hit the 100% mark, totally had me hooked. See, while other previous shotguns had the potential of breaking the 100% status mark, the Tigris Prime was perfectly calibrated to bypass armor, utilizing the amped up slash procs that resulted from its insanely high base damage. Combine that with the fact that its impact and puncture damage are so low and the next damage types on its priority list to trigger status would be the elemental combos you've slotted in. Use in tandem with viral and radiation and now you're having the health total that you've been dealing damage directly to as well as providing yourself a bit of crowd control. Which just goes to show that while raw power is awesome, a little bit of finesse can go a long way. Now before we move on to my favorite primary weapon of the year, let's take a very quick look at a few of those who nearly made it on the list. At number 6 we've got the Tsar with its ability to swap between a long range cannon mode made for clearing out groups and its short range barrage mode specialized at clearing out approaching enemies. I love the huge variation between the alternate fire modes, however each has a very limited specialization which kept it from making the list. The Cyrano's Prime comes in at number 7, because y'all know I love those weird mechanics and honestly when this one first came out, it left a lot of people scratching their heads. It's the first successful iteration of a bow made for clearing out groups, which completely goes against the innate nature of the bow category. Its lack of power, however, did prevent it from being my go-to. Last but definitely not least is the Dexibaris at number 8. With its strong base damage, impressive critical stats, and high accuracy, this thing definitely packs a punch, especially when combined with the appropriate alkalite mods. In addition, its model is also absolutely gorgeous, and we got it for free! How can you not love that? So finally, we arrive at number 1, the Notorious Hema. 
Honestly, I went back and forth between this and the Tigger's Prime as my weapon of the year, but ease of use is really what won it for me. Now, while many people only seem to focus on the fact that this thing has an insane research cost, I think it's safe to say that there may be a reason why there is such a massive barrier to entry. When I first got my hands on this, without putting a single forma on it, this baby was effectively taking down level 145 armored targets without even using the appropriate elemental combo. With its viral base damage and its high base status chance, this weapon excels at having health totals as well as reliably afflicting any other statuses equipped on the weapon. It's also got the unique mechanic of consuming a percentage of your health, approximately 3% on a full reload, but healing you for 10% of the damage you deal on every headshot you land. Mix in its vicious reload animation with one of the few infested weapon models that I can actually call beautiful, and this thing definitely makes a statement. And it better had for the amount of mutagen masses it costs to research. So I hope you guys enjoyed this installment and let me know, is it me or did we just not get all that many new primaries this year? I kind of felt like we had a ton of melee weapons to choose from in comparison to this list. Regardless, let me know in the comments below if there were any primaries that didn't show up on my list that appeared on yours, as I'm always curious to see exactly how people get down and dirty behind closed doors. So thank you all for watching another episode of The Hit List. I'm going to go ahead and toss up a link to the playlist to see the other categories, as well as my most recent video where I re-roll over 75,000 Kuba on ribbons. Now don't forget to do all the things that I ask you to do at the end of every one of these. And as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your body. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye